And uh, we have one more superlative uh, award to give tonight. <laughs> Uh, you already know a little bit about him, and uh, we're going to introduce him, then we're going to do the video, and then he's going to come up. I have got this down. So, <laughs> Dr. Patrick Patton, uh, let's roll the video. My family would sing this all the time, and my mom could sing it really, really well. She had a great falsetto. The first instrument I learned to play was the ukulele because my family is actually Hawaiian. Dad wound up moving back to Lingle and brought his Hawaiian wife, my mother, to Lingle in February. February. My Hawaiian mother would dance the hula. I learned how to do all that. That whole combination of living in two cultures, one that created sugar beets, one that created sugar cane, and I grew up on both of those, in both of those cultures at the same time. This is happening in Lingle, Wyoming. Let me go back to my junior year in high school when I was in the Allstate Chorus. After that concert was over, the feeling that I got from being in that chorus was one of the most powerfully igniting things that forced me into choral music. I remember looking up at that chorus, and looking up at the stage where the chorus was, and saying to myself, someday I'm going to conduct the Allstate Chorus. Pat is absolutely committed to the choral profession. You know, such a major uh, force in creating an identity for Wyoming choral music. Pat Patton founded the Madrigal Feast. This was an idea for raising funds for a fine arts endowment. Because of his leadership, because of his vision for this project, it grew and grew and grew, and we would sell a thousand tickets in 45 minutes. There was a lot of merriment and mayhem, and he was right in the thick of it. His legacy is we have a huge uh, fine arts endowment for use in um, art, music, and theater at Casper College. It makes me tired simply to think about what Pat's been up to. He represents uh, what I think are some of the most important Wyoming values. Good work ethic, and he learned really early to have a lot of fun. We have a tendency to sometimes put music and art on the back burner, and that's not where it belongs. He's a guy who's got high standards and high expectations and high ideals, but a very open and welcoming spirit. What music does is incorporate the entire brain, which also incorporates what we've called the soul and the spirit. Just everywhere I go in the country, he's known, and they just absolutely love him. It never is done, no matter what you do with a piece of choral music, there's always something more to do with it. Whatever I sing, there's always something more to do with it. I think we stay involved in it as musicians because it's constantly evolving. It never is done. And for that reason, it continues to propel us forward. Pat Patton, winner of a 2017 Governor's Arts Award. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> who put that together? I don't know who that guy is. It's just something, wow. I don't know. Um, Governor Mead, thank you. This is, um, this is a significant moment in my life. And um, uh, I, I, don't, I remember saying that someday I wanted to conduct the Allstate Choir. I don't remember ever saying that someday I wanted to be a Governor's Arts Award recipient. But uh, those things kind of sneak up on you. You're not really aware that they're going to happen. I wonder if we've thought about, I mean, I'm being honored as a choral director, and yeah, I can play and do some things too, but um, I wonder if we've thought about what that really means. So listen carefully, Governor Matt, and tell me what it is that you hear. What did you hear? Carol asking me to do something. <laughs> Carol asking you to do something? You have a good ear, sir. <laughs> That's the right thing. The answer is nothing. 
There was nothing that we heard. And the reason for that is, a lot of people are going to agree with me on this. My wife, Marsha Patton, is a significant choral director and celebrated and done well. Sh yes, she is. Sean Ambrose is in the crowd tonight, a very close friend. He's the director of the Cheyenne Chamber Singers. We've performed together before. Um, there is a guy here named Paul Ormseth who was in the bathroom earlier and came out and <laughs> recently retired from Moorcroft High School. He's a band and choir director. Um, Nathan Searcy is a new choir director in Gillette right now. It's brand new there. So there, there, this hall is, is filled with people who are artists, but they're performing artists that are music directors. They will agree with me when I say, we can do nothing without the commitment and conviction of other people. The choir simply doesn't exist. The band, the orchestra doesn't exist without the commitment of other people. Yes, thank you for this award, but this is not about me, and it never has been. All the things that we've ever done, Eric Unruh, sat, he wrote, Eric, thank you for writing on my behalf, and you heard him speak on this, on this uh, video. But the magical feast that you saw would not have existed without the art department, without the theater department, without all those people coming together to make that event happen. And they're here tonight, and I owe you so much. It's those things that make art come alive. Marsha and I, Marsha Patton's probably going to figure in this a lot here tonight. You're going to get that. She, is, she and I have chosen education as our focus for art. So the things that, okay, we were teachers. And as teachers, Marsha just said this to me tonight. She said, you know, if you're going to take a picture, if you're an artist, you're going to take a picture, you have to take a picture, but you've got to take a selfie too. Because Marsha will tell you that we have to be the people that we want our students to be. Yes, they will come and we will work with them, but we have to be those people. It's one of the greatest challenges that we all face. And you know, it's not just teachers, it's all of us here, all of us here that do this. We are always constantly in the public eye. All of us here are. And whatever it is that we choose to do is the very thing that's going to affect those around us for all time. Um, there's a guy out here named Bruce Richardson. You know Bruce? He's right back there. That's where he is. Now, I gotta tell you something about Bruce because it was he and Marsha Patton, there she is again. I can't get her out of this conversation. But Bruce Richardson nominated me and he and Marsha Patton got in cahoots and they twisted the arms and twisted the pens of all these people all across the world in different places to write on my behalf. And they all did. They didn't tell me that I was nominated. I didn't even know that I was nominated until about a week and a half before I got your letter. I didn't know. And it's unlike Bruce Richardson to keep his mouth shut. He doesn't know how to do that. But he, I sat at 321, Art 321, and entertained for our art walks. Thank you, Holly, for everything that you've done for the city of Casper, and especially for art walks and everything that you mean to us. And I would sit there and entertain, and Bruce would sit right there and listen to me, and he never said one word. We've never heard that before. It was a bit, thank you for your nomination, good sir, and for all the support that you've given me. Um, I have to look in the past. There's, I bet, Governor Matt, you and everybody out here can count on one hand the number of friends that we have that we can't remember not knowing. Does that make sense? I mean, on one hand, there's this many people that I can't remember that I haven't known, that they've, they've been my friends for so long that I don't remember not knowing them. And one of them is a guy that I think had your back and maybe you had his, a guy named Jim Rose. Do you know Jim Rose at all? Yeah, I thought you might. He's right back here too. Jim and I grew up in Lingle together. I don't remember not knowing Jim. Our parents were that close and our families were that close. But what you don't know about Jim and I is, <laughs> Jim, Jim had this, Jim had this, this album, it was an album called Festival of Light Classical Music. It was 12 albums. There were 33 and a third LPs that I, I think there's 30% of the people in here that have no idea what I've just said. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're like records and you had a needle and it stopped, it spun around and stuff. 
Jim had a stereo in his living room that was as big as a Volkswagen. And we would go in there and listen to these, these I would tell Eulenspiegel's Mary pranks. This classical music is what it was. And, and the overture to the marriage of Figaro and from, what was it, Jim Lohengrin from, it was The Ride of the Valkyrs by Wagner. We'd listen to all those things all the time. Jim and Pat Patton were the definition of nerd before the word was even invented. Everybody else is listening to Elvis Presley, and here's Jim and I listening to classical music. <laughs> well, what we don't know and what I had a chance to share with Jim earlier was that we didn't know it at the time, but what he was doing was formulating, what we were doing was formulating how we were going to be for the rest of our lives. If it weren't for Jim, I wouldn't have fallen in love with classical music, and I wouldn't have the group that I do now, and I wouldn't be doing the things that I am. You see, the Gillette Chamber Singers are my instrument. And anyone in here that has a choir or a band and an orchestra, whoever it is that you are working with is your instrument. Casper College played such a huge role in that. And I told Jim tonight that both Marsha and Pat Pat, there she is again, are miserably flunking retirement because we are constantly involved with choruses. And so I think it's those things that keep us vital in art. One story that's a quick one that I need to tell you is I was so honored, was it two years or three years ago already, you guys, Gillette, when we were in Spain? And we saw, a, at one of the museums that we were looking at, we saw an artwork by Pablo Picasso called Guernica. And Guernica is a small town in Spain that was bombed. Neely, you gotta help, my daughter Neely is out here. She's an art historian, an art historian teacher. When I screw up, tell dad. But Guernica was a town that was bombed willy-nilly by uh, the Nazis during, I think it was the Spanish Civil War. I think is when that was happening. And um, Picasso did this mural that I think it was, is in cubism form, is that right, Neely? From a, from a, you know, she's nodding back and forth like, Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's, from a, lay, from a layman's point of view, it's art that's angular and distorted. And it depicted, it was, it was against this bombing, and it depicted the uh, atrocities that happened to innocent people, at this, the innocent people of this community. And the story, the, the, uh, the, the tour guide that was taking on this, we all know about tour guides, they just want a good tip. But this, this story was really something that was important to me. And I, I think all of us in the Gillette Chamber Singers remember that. The, the story is that a German soldier approached Pablo Picasso and said, oh, did you create this work? And Picasso looked him square in the eye and said, no, you did. It means that art has its responsibilities. Art is all forms of art. They're political. They're, they're angular. They celebrate. Art celebrates. But art also keeps us on track. When we are not right, art reflects that. And it's for those reasons that I have so much admiration for you, First Lady, in the way that you've chosen to take high school art and display it all around your, your, your residence and where we were tonight, the things that we saw. They are beginning, they are growing, and it's important for us as educators to make sure that we take them on their journey, being the models that they need to see while challenging them all, challenging them all at the same time. And it's those things that I think are Thank you for what you do. It's those things that make art what it is. It's for that reason, good governor, that I think that the state of Wyoming needs especially to continue in its support with, these, with art of all sorts. What I would say about team effort is that in the choirs and the bands and the orchestra, there is not an A team and a whole bunch of people that sub in. I played basketball and football in, in Lingle, Wyoming. I was a quarterback, a crappy one. I didn't understand the game, but I could pass the ball. So I'd ask Jerry Fulmer, my halfback, I said, Jerry, what shall we run? I said, run this. I said, okay, who do I pass it to? So pass it to Gary Price. On two. That's what I would know. But, so I know something about that. But the difference in our art now is there isn't a B squad. There aren't substitutes. Everyone is engaged constantly. And that's the difference in our particular art, that's the performing art. And all of it has to be protected, focused, continued. Because it represents everything that we are. 
all things that we are, all the good and all the bad. And I, 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 don't, I don't know you as well, Governor Matt, as, as my brother Jim Rose does, but um, from what I saw tonight, I think that you understand just as much as I do that it's been said that behind every man there stands a strong woman. Well, I got news for you guys. <laughs> Marsha Patton is not standing behind me. She's not even next to me. Marsha Patton is out in front of Pat Patton with a toe chain slung over her shoulder, wrapped around my backside, dragging me forward like some kind of a stubborn mule with only one focus in her mind, and that is to make sure that Pat Patton does his very best all the time. And so these, to Marsha, thank you, dear, for everything that you are to me. And you know, there's, they're kind of silly words. There's, there's only two of them left. But to those of you that wrote on my behalf, to the Gillette Chamber Singers who have been my support for these past seven years, especially to Casper College, for everything that you gave me and everything that you helped me with and the way that you helped me grow. And to all of you here who celebrate the arts, the only, I've only got two dumb words left and I wish I could do better, but thank you.